Lake Neos had long been quiet before it happened. Farmers and migratory herders in the West African country of Cameroon knew the lake as large, still, and blue. But on the evening of August 21st, 1986, farmers living near the lake heard rumbling. At the same time, a frothy spray shot hundreds of feet out of the lake, and a white cloud collected over the water. From the ground, the cloud grew to 328 feet, 100 meters, tall, and flowed across the land. When farmers near the lake left their houses to investigate the noise, they lost consciousness. The heavy cloud sunk into a valley, which channeled it into settlements. People in the affected areas collapsed in their tracks, at home, on roads, or in the field, losing consciousness or dying in a few breaths. In Neos and Kam, the first village hit by the cloud, everyone but four inhabitants on high ground died. The valley split and the cloud followed, killing people up to 15.5 miles, 25 kilometers, away from the lake. Over the next two days, people from surrounding areas entered the valley to find the bodies of humans and cows lying on the ground. By August 23rd, cloud had mostly blown away and the silence had lifted. After being unconscious for up to 36 hours, some people revived to find, horrifically, that their family members, neighbors, and livestock were dead. The lake had changed, too. It was now shallower. Plants and leaves floated in it, and its formerly picturesque blue hue had darkened into rust. More than a week after its eruption, Lake Neos has lost its blue hue and turned brown. You can also see vegetation damage caused by the water surge that followed the emergence of the toxic gas cloud. Scientists discovered a heavy cloud made of carbon dioxide over the lake. This cloud was dense because carbon dioxide is heavier than air. Breathing in carbon dioxide Side directly stops people from breathing and being aware. If the gas was less than 15%, people fainted and woke up later. More than 15% made them stop breathing and die quickly. Scientists argued about why so much carbon dioxide came out of the lake, about a third of a cubic mile. Some thought a volcano caused it to explode. Others believed the gas slowly leaked into the lake and built up. When the explosion happened, released a lot of gas all at once. William Evans and his team put up carbon dioxide monitors by the lake. If levels got too high, sirens warned people to go to higher ground. Eventually, scientists figured out that carbon dioxide was slowly leaking from the lake's bottom after finding high levels of it there. Scientists searched for signs of a volcanic eruption in the lake, like sulfur and chloride. They even set up machines to detect small earthquakes that usually happen after a volcano erupts. But surprisingly, there were no signs of volcanic activity, making the idea of a volcano causing the gas release unlikely. Scientists believed that carbon dioxide had stayed trapped at the bottom of Lake Neos for a very long time, held down by 682 feet 208 meters of water. They thought that something from outside triggered the gas to come out. Most likely it was a bunch of rocks falling into the lake. When these rocks sank to the bottom, they pushed some gas up, causing a huge amount of gas to come up to the surface. If this sounds like a freak occurrence to you, read on to learn about the lake that exploded in an eerily similar fashion just two years before. Candidate for another exploding lake? Lake Kivu, seen here at dusk on October 3rd, 2006 in Goma, Democratic Republic of Congo, has CO2 leaking in from magma below and is very deep. Nearly two years earlier, on the night of August 15th, 1984, people in Cameroon, about 62 miles away from Lake Neos, heard strange noises near a smaller lake called Lake Manon. At around 11.30 p.m., carbon dioxide suddenly came out of the lake and settled into a nearby valley close to a road. Early in the morning, people from a nearby village named Njindun were on their way to work and walked into this cloud of gas. It collapsed and sadly passed away. By around 10.30 a.m., wind had cleared the gas away. Doctor and a police officer arrived later to find 37 people dead, most of them along a short stretch of the road, including a man found slumped over his motorcycle. The Cameroonian government suspected the explosion might have been an act of terrorism or someone putting harmful chemicals into the lake. However, some villagers in Njindun believed in traditional stories that talked about evil spirits leaving the lake to harm people living nearby. There's another lake in Africa called Lake Kivu, found between Rwanda and the Congo. People are worried about it because it's much deeper than Lake Neos and can hold a lot more gas. Bacteria in the lake are making methane carbon dioxide is coming in from magma below the ground. Some evidence from layers of dirt at the bottom of the lake suggests that the lake might have exploded around 7,000 to 8,000 years ago. Around 2 million people live close to Lake Kivu, so scientists are keeping an eye on the gas pressure in the lake. They're worried that if something were to happen, it could be a huge natural disaster, almost as big as the tsunamis in 2004. There's also a lake called Lake Quilatoa in Ecuador that's similar to Neos. It's deep, has a lot of carbon dioxide, and is in a warm climate. Some scientists think it might be similar to Neos, could have a dangerous gas buildup. Capulin Mountain, a huge cinder cone that erupted thousands of years ago, rises 1,000 feet, 305 meters, 
above its base. Rare occurrences of exploding lakes, exemplified by lakes Neos and Manoon, trace their origins to weak spots in Cameroon's Earth crust. Here, rapid vertical movement of magma forms tubes toward the surface, creating craters when exploding upon contact with wet rock. These craters formed millennia ago, later filled with water, evolving into the lakes we see today. The lake beds, remnants of ancient magma tubes persist, leasing carbon dioxide, prevalent gas in liquid rock. While over 100 locations in Cameroon emit substantial carbon dioxide, pose no immediate danger, according to Evans's research. Exploding lakes aren't just a result of carbon dioxide, they're a cosmic alignment of factors. Firstly, picture a deep lake. It's like a fizzy drink sealed tight. The deeper it is, the more pressure clamps down on the gas at the lake's bottom, waiting for even the slightest nudge, like wind, to set off a potentially explosive chain reaction. Secondly, imagine the perfect climate, stable year-round, typical of tropical areas, unlike places where lakes breathe or turn over regularly. Here, they maintain their layers brewing a hidden danger beneath their tranquil surfaces. Lastly, at a dash of drama. Trigger, be it an earthquake or excess gas, disrupts the delicate balance, setting off a volatile chain of events. Cameroon, it's the stage for this thrilling geological play. Deep lakes filled with carbon dioxide from magma, steady tropical climate, and the potential for a trigger. After Lake Neos erupted, experts explored ways to make both lakes safe. Bombing was considered but deemed too risky, as it might cause catastrophic flooding. Instead, a simpler and safer solution emerged using pipes to remove the gas in a controlled manner. Installing these pipes took time due to limited funds and access. First pipe was inserted in Lake Neos in 2001, reaching down to the gas layer. Initially, gas spurted out, resembling uncorked champagne, but without the deadly outcome. Currently, Lake Neos is around 80% degassed compared to its pre-1986 explosion state, making it safer. That remains hazardous. Significant disturbance like a powerful earthquake could trigger another eruption. Lake Neos faced is a risk from its weak dam, which might break, causing a huge flood and releasing gas pressure from deep waters. Urgent piping of the gas is needed, followed by dam repairs. Plans for two more pipes were set, starting around spring 2009. However, Lake Manoon is almost entirely degassed with three pipes installed between 2003 and 2006. Evans believes another eruption is unlikely there, making it a safe place to live now. When your local lake smells sulfurous during turnover, think of it as the lake's breath. Be grateful it's not a hazardous event like an eruption.